So I'm going to talk about uh, Weierstrass models of elliptic curves. Um, so uh, a an elliptic curve, an elliptic. curve is a marked curve so marked curve means that it's a it'll have a, it'll be a, a scheme e over s here but this is going to be proper and it's going to have a section here so this is going to be uh, we'll call this e so this is the zero section We'll think about the zero section, and this will give this uh, the group structure. Um, it'll be of uh, genus one. Okay, that's all I'm going to mean by an elliptic curve. Okay, this is supposed to be a little e here. Okay, so um, given an elliptic curve, so uh, there's going to be a Weierstrass model. Uh, every elliptic curve. E over K, uh, where K is a field, uh, has a Weierstrass model. Okay, and I'm going to define what a Weierstrass model is. So this means that we're going to have some embedding. E into uh, P2K, so it's going to be a plane curve um, with the equation y squared plus a1xy plus a3y is equal to x cubed plus a2x squared plus a4x plus a6. Okay, so it's a, a mouthful. Um, how does this give it a projective embedding uh, in the projective model? Uh, we have homogeneous coordinates x, y, and z, and then we let x be capital X over z, and y be little big Y over z here, and then uh, we kind of just have the homogeneous version of exactly what I just said. So you make everything here uh, have degree 3 by throwing in uh, z's where you need them. So a two x squared z plus a four x z squared plus a six c cubed. Okay, so this is the projective model. Um, so we have this. We have some embedding. Uh, okay, so this is what a Weierstrass model is. It's some embedding like this, um, so that uh, so that um, the marked point. Uh, becomes uh, the point at infinity uh, so that this is what the the marked point is okay so this is the the this is the infinite point um all right and the proof of this Oh, I forgot to say something else. So the last thing that I wanted to say is that, um, so this kind of goes, it goes all the way to here. So the theorem goes here, all the way down. It'll go here. And then it says, moreover, uh, uh, such uh, an equation, so that's called the Weierstrass equation, is unique up to uh, the following transformation uh, u squared x prime plus r y is equal to u cubed y prime plus uh, u cubed 
uh, s x prime plus t. All right, so uh, this is the this is the point here, and then w what's going on here? U is going to be a unit, um, and then s t and r are just going to be elements of k. And so once you change variables here, you're you're going to you're going to change this equation into x prime. And so okay, so it's like every one of these these guys has one of these equations. And uh, when you, you the, the you know like if you find another one of these equations, they're going to be related by one of these transformations. Okay, and so the the proof idea, and you can find this online, even you can probably find it on YouTube, is that uh, it's uh, Riemann Roch. So the Riemann Roch will get you this this first. Um, so this first substitution here, so it's not like a direct, a direct riemann roch but you just kind of have to like uh, uh, do it a little bit. Uh, so using uh, O, uh, E with the point at infinity, I think you do six times the uh, point at infinity. Six times the point at infinity here. Okay. And then... Um, and then the the other thing that you use is you use substitutions. All right. Um, let me let me define now from from this a bunch of invariants. So uh, let's write down an equation. So given this thing. Okay, so we have our Weierstrass equation, and then we're we are going to define a bunch of invariants. Okay, and I, and then I'll explain how these invariants are used. Um, so we have this b two. This is a one squared plus four a two. B three is equal to two a four plus a one a three. We have b four, which is equal to two. Uh, oh, it's not it. It's a3 squared plus 4a6. And then we have b8. So this is equal to a1. What happened to b6? Okay. a2, uh, a0 plus... Shit, there is a b6. One second, I need to go look at b6. All right, so um, I, I, I mislabeled these. So this dude here, uh, this guy, is uh, b4. This guy's B6. And now I'm okay. So B8 is this uh, for A2, A6 minus A1, A3, A4. Hmm. There is no A3. Oh, there is an A3. Sorry. A3 is good. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is... Okay. Now I, I can continue. Uh, these will be used for like a, a first change of variables. Um, then we have uh, C4, which is B2 squared minus... So this is like a really old school way of doing this. Um, as you can see, these expressions are extremely tedious. Um, and I hate them. Uh, okay, 216, we have the C's. And then we have the the kind of the the main our main guys here. So this is the discriminant, and the discriminant is defined this way. So there's other ways to define. Well, uh, using elimination theory, there's another way to define discriminants, and that's more general. Uh, but this is kind of a old thing, and I'm actually not sure if uh, the 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 discriminant that I'm thinking of is uh, the same thing as this discriminant. So the discriminant that I'm thinking of, you use resultants. Um, 9b2, b4, b6. And then this one here, I'm pretty sure you can use resultants. You can use resultants in um, in the simple Weierstrass form, but uh, for the... So I'll, I'll get to the simple Weierstrass form. Okay, so this thing here is... Uh, can I... How do I... I can't do that. So this guy here is the discriminant. And uh, this guy down here 
is uh, let's kind of chop these up. Okay, this is the J invariant of the elliptic curve. Okay, so we have this Weierstrass equation or Weierstrass equation, whatever you want to call it. Um, the Weierstrass equation, uh, well, and it comes with these invariants, and using these invariants, you can define the discriminant in the J invariant. Uh, note that these only depend on the coefficients because you can plug these into these to get these, and then you, you plug this, you know, to get, say, this guy and this guy. And, um, and, and okay, another thing that, that some people forget is that, um, is that we, we, we come, the elliptic curve in the Weierstrass form comes with an invariant differential. Uh, so when people are differ we're trying to generalize this to higher dimensions, they always forget that it comes with an invariant differential. And uh, the invariant dif differential is given by the, this following form. So 2y plus a1x plus a3. Is, so and this is a global holomorphic differential. Uh, plus 2a2x plus a4 minus a1y. Okay, so this is all in the denominator. Okay. Okay, so so with uh, a virus stress form, you get all this, this zoo of invariants. Okay, so what? Okay, well, um, uh, let me say what these are used for. The first, the first batch. So if the characteristic of the field, uh, then we can simplify the equation. Uh, so we get to complete the square, and. When we complete the square, we can rename variables uh, in the following way. y tilde minus a1x tilde minus a3. And then we get uh, x, if we let x just be x tilde, then we get this substitution here uh, lands us in the following simplified form, b2, this thing plus 2, b4 plus b6, okay? So, uh, okay, if characteristic is not 2, completing the square allows us to use these coefficients here and, and get a new equation. Um, if the characteristic of k is not equal to 2 or 3, uh, we can simplify further. Uh, and the si further simplification is that we let, um, let's say y prime is going to be equal to... Uh, so y tilde over 108, and then x prime is going to be equal to uh, x tilde minus 3b2 uh, divided by 36. Okay, and then if you make this substitution, uh, you'll get to an even simpler form. Here, y squared is equal to x prime uh, cubed minus 27 uh, C4 uh, X uh, minus 54 C to the 6. Okay, and so um, here, so like let's go back here. So now you can get into just using these expressions here. Um, so this is for characteristic 2. These come up characteristic, you can simplify that even further uh, for, or for characteristic not equal to 3 even. Um, okay, and, and always these these relations these, these invariants here have some relations um, so the the invariants have relations so they're not all independent I mean other than the obvious ones so the obvious ones are of course are like these plug into here right and uh, you know and so on and so forth that you know you can plug in um, well, I mean, you can plug in here into, into the J invariant, things like that, okay? And the non-obvious ones are the following. Um, the That 4B8 is equal to B2, B6 minus B4 squared. And uh, 1728 of the discriminant is equal to C4... Uh, let's see. C4 cubed minus uh, C6 squared. Okay, and so this you can kind of see there there's some homogeneity here, and this will come this this comes up uh, representing these as modular forms. Um, okay, and um, the 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 basic case that probably everyone is familiar with or remembers 
is that uh, when the characteristic of k is not equal to 2 or 3, um, then we get this form. We, we always have a form like this, x cubed plus ax plus b. And we have that delta is equal to minus 16 for, I mean, I'm just kind of repeating some, some stuff here. I, I'm just repeating it because it'll be nice later. Uh, 1728 um, for a uh, cubed divided by delta. Okay. <sighs> okay, and then now um, I'm going to kind of tell you what the, the, the invariants say. And this is kind of the important part of this whole thing. Okay. So, uh, so here's a theorem. Uh, the curve, so the Weierstrass form, uh, y squared is equal to uh, plus... So I, I'm going to say we don't necessarily know. Okay, so every elliptic curve has one of these forms, right? But uh, we don't necessarily know that this thing is going to be smooth um, and that every such one of these guys is actually going to be an elliptic curve. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so it's classified as follows. So it's classified. As follows. Okay, so first, um, well, let's kind of make a, a little table here. Uh, here, and let's say, let's say a picture. Okay, and this will be um, the name or type, and then we'll have delta here, and then we'll have C four here. Okay, so. If this is not zero, okay, then we, we don't really care about this. And th then it's going to be non-singular. And then it's going to look like a normal elliptic curve. Um, all right. If this is equal to zero and this is not zero, uh, then it's going to be a node. Okay, and the picture looks like that. So this is kind of the information that, um, so what I'm describing now is the information that the discriminant and this C4 invariant give you about the, the, uh, the virus stress form. And um, here that uh, if, if this is zero and this is zero, then it's a cusp. And the multiplicity of the singularity is two. Okay, so we have this, here are, this, here are the singular points. Okay, and, um, uh, Okay, this is one of the properties that I wanted to say. And the, the second property, so let's call this one. Uh, the other thing, uh, theorem, okay, in the B, is that two uh, elliptic curves, uh, curves with the same J invariant uh, have the same, are, are, are isomorphic. Okay, so we have uh, two elliptic curves are, are, are isomorphic, uh, and this is an if and only if. So uh, two elliptic curves are isomorphic if they have the same J invariant, and if they have the same J invariant, they're isomorphic. Okay, uh, that's what I wanted to say, um, and this is this is great. Okay, so um, now I kind of want to talk about uh, minimal Weierstrass forms. Um, maybe I'll, I'll stop. Cut the video there and then do minimal virus stress forms. Okay, so um, okay, so for every elliptic curve, and uh, and every valuation, so let's say k is a global field. Okay, so global field means like a number field or uh, a, a function field of another curve, okay? And let's say every valuation or absolute value, finite absolute value, so this is non-Archimedean absolute value. So this is the same thing. Uh, these can be input and bijection with um, spec O of K. So this is the underlying topological space of O of K. And uh, we, you know, and this will be the, the, 
same thing. There's this will be the corresponding prime here. So this is the prime ideals of O of k. Uh, there exists a a Weierstrass model. Okay, and the model is is going to be given by y new, uh, y v squared plus a one subscript v uh, x v y v plus a three v y v is equal to um, uh, let's say x v cubed plus a two v x v squared plus a four v so I'm just kind of copying this down uh, a six v so I'm just writing down uh, this this uh, uh, equation here. Okay, and, and uh, with these equations, we have some associated invariants. Okay, so again, we have um, uh, B2. Uh, so I'm going to drop the news real quick. So A A1 squared plus 4A2. Uh, B3 is uh, 2A... So I did it again before, and then we have B6 and B8. Okay, so this is equal to A1 squared plus 4A2. Ugh. Okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast forward through this. Okay, and then it has this discriminant, delta V, which is equal to minus B2, B8, minus 8, B4 cubed, uh, minus 27, B to the 6, plus 9, B2, B4, B6. Okay, so this is the discriminant here. Okay, and uh, we say... This, this equation is called minimal, if, um, well, the here is minimal, among all possible uh, Weierstrass models. Okay. So uh, now, now for okay. So let's let E over K be an elliptic curve. Uh, over a uh, global field K. Okay, so then um, we're going to define this, delta E over K minimal is going to be defined to be equal to the minimal discriminant and what it's going to be is it's going to be equal to uh, here the product for V in uh, Valuations of k, which are finite, um, so our, so p v the order here, order of some minimal discriminant here, uh, and so this is going to be an ideal in OK. Okay, so uh, okay.
so th this is the minimal discriminant. You get an ideal uh, for a global field. Okay. And so, um, so what this does is it measures the reduction mod P of an elliptic curve. Okay. So we know that we can make the minimal model so that, uh, so o over a, a particular global field, we can make it so that this is at worst a cusp. So this could be, so we can arrange. So this is at worst a cusp. Uh, meaning, uh, from what we said before, that uh, this order here, uh, so this will be f f uh, away from, okay, so when P is not 2, or when the characteristic is not 2. Um, I think when the characteristic is 2 as well, um, I need to think about that. Okay, so... So we have this, and one of the questions we can ask uh, can we find a single uh, wire stress equation um, here over K? Uh, which is minimal for all V in evaluations. Okay, so can we find a single Weierstrass equation over K or, or over OK, uh, which is minimal? Uh, so the, the answer is no, uh, but there's some interesting things come out of it. Um, okay, so let's 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 start with a a, a random equation. So um, let's take uh, so start with some random equation. Random, rando model. Okay, so e rando, and then it's going to be defined by y squared is a one x y plus a three y. And it's going to be equal to x cubed plus a3, x squared plus a4, x plus a6 over k. Okay. And then, um, so for all v uh, in the valuations of k, by that theorem, we can get to uh, a minimal model. Uh, by the following x is equal to u v so so I'm just going to change the, the 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 v coordinates r v uh, y is equal to uh, so again this u v is a unit um, y v plus um, s v u v squared x v plus t v okay so uh, these are units the user units uh, they R, S, and T's are just elements of K, and the discriminants are related by, uh, so delta rando, so that's the, the discriminant equation for, the discriminant of the random fire stress equation for a model, so that we took some random model. So this is gonna be this thing to the 12th uh, delta V. Okay, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cook up some some crazy invariant. Um, so we define this crazy ideal, uh, ideal here. And the crazy ideal uh, I'm gonna call alpha, uh, and it apparently depends on rando, uh, and it's gonna be defined to be equal to um, so we do over the valuations of our field, and uh, here, so these are not infinite, right? 
uh, we, and then we take the order of the UV here. And so what we'll see is that, um, so we can always go to the minimal equation, the minimal virus stress form, and it'll be, um, so, so we have this rando here for our guy. We take the ideal generated by this, and then it's kind of bad. So we have that, like, u to the 12th factor here. And that guy, uh, imp well, so we have this kind of improvement. Uh, this guy is kind of this improvement on uh, delta rando given by this relationship here. And so this is the minimal one here. Okay, so um, so we have this improvement on this guy, and then now I can I can state kind of a, uh, the cool theorem. Okay, so we we defined this crazy thing via the change in coordinates here, and um, and now what we get to say is, is is the cool stuff. So now the theorem. So um, one, it says that. This thing, this class in the divisor class group is well defined, is independent of rando, of the random model. The random, oh, random, you know. It's not really a random model, but, you know, I called it random because it's just some dude off the street. Uh, so two is, uh, so there exists, so given this guy, a global uh, Weierstrass model. So a global Weierstrass model is a model that works for every single, that, which is minimal for every single valuation. Uh, if and only if, so it's a, it's a model over K, if and only if uh, this guy, rando, is zero in the ideal class group. Okay, and then, um, and then a consequence of this is that uh, here is that if K has class number one, uh, K, then there exists global virus stress models. Okay, and like, the, for example here, K is Q. If K was Q, we can find a single model Right over all for all so so that it's minimal for all the primes. Um, okay, so it's clear that uh, this implies this. Right, uh, this I'll get I'll prove, and then this I won't prove. Uh, the proof can be found in Silverman, but the the I'm just doing the easy stuff. It's kind of bad, but okay. So uh, let's take a, so let E and E prime uh, be two models. Then, um, so we'll, then what do you have? We have delta, uh, so let, they're related by some u, and uh, so we have their two discriminants like this, okay? And then we can define, uh, so then we have some, some nice relations. So then we have uh, like alpha, so this will be the one for e uh, to the 12th here. Um, and we, we, we knew that this thing here uh, let's see, alpha, let's see, let's see, this is alpha prime. Okay, so this was equal to the minimal discriminant. Okay, and we also knew that the minimal discriminant was the same thing for uh, alpha to the 12th, because from our, from our formula. Um, so this was like that correction factor thing. And now, uh, so we, we have that these two, two things are equal, but we also have that the discriminants are related, so I can put this, uh, back into here, so this was u to the 12th delta prime uh, here, 12th. Okay, and so this tells me 
and this is delta prime, and then we have u, this dude, this a here, that's my fracture a, to the twelfth, okay? And so this will tell us that um, here, u here. All right, so so we have this, and which tells us that the, the so uh, this guy is equal to in the ideal class group, because since this is a this is principal. Okay, um, okay. And the last part was easy. So this is a uh, this is proof of um, part one. Um, all right, so that's that's kind of all I wanted to say. Um, uh, and then we, we had this information about the nodes, the cusps, um, and, and that's that's all I want to say. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about um, uh, Spiro's conjecture in the Fry curve.